going on, everybody? It is Wednesday, May 9th, and uh, I hope you had uh, some of the good pitching and not Dylan Bundy. We want to talk to someone that did have Dylan Bundy. What's going on, Jake? Yeah, Dylan Bundy did not go well very quickly. At least he didn't, you know, drag us around for five innings and then give up a seven-run inning. He he ended us pretty quick if you played him. Uh, luckily, I had another lineup with Castillo and Godley, who I thought was going to pitch a lot better than he did. Um, but if you had Luis Castillo and someone else, uh, probably did a lot better. So we'll try to be better today. Uh, can't win them all. <laughs> no, this is going to happen, people. Get ready for it. Uh, just in case you're not familiar with Dylan Bundy's line last night, five hits, Four home runs, seven earned, two walks, no Ks in 0 0.0 innings. Yes, that is not recording it out. <laughs> yeah, that's that's hard to do. But. They could have picked a fan to do that one. Yep. <laughs> it was uh, so. interesting. I'm not much better. Uh, let's pull up the line here for Rich Hill. Rich Hill, four innings, seven hits, three home runs, five earned. Did get a couple Ks. It was good to see that Rich Hill uh, could at least pick up a couple outs. Um, so, you know, yeah, he, we weren't all over it yesterday from a pitching perspective. Those home runs Rich Hill gave up, he just, like, grooved them in there. Yeah. I don't know what he was doing. I was watching some of that game because I was watching Godley, and the, both pitchers looked really bad. So the Godley call I was pretty ashamed of, even more than the Bundy call. Um, Godley just looked – he couldn't get ahead of anyone, and – he was just wild. So, not the best MLB DFS night from a pitching standpoint. No, I hope you had Severino or Nola. <laughs> yeah. Or Castillo. Yeah. Alrighty, we've got seven games to talk about here on the main slate. Um, everything of value from a hitting perspective is going to be happening at that 7 o'clock time. So, uh, you'll know how you're doing pretty early. Let's just dig into this. First game up, Orioles and Royals. Orioles, five-run implied total. Royals, 4.5. 54% chance to win for the Orioles. Uh, Andrew Kashner going for Baltimore as a favorite, which is fascinating. Eric Skogland going for Kansas City. Uh, I will not be playing either of these pitchers. Um, I assume we're on the same page and we want to talk about hitting. Yeah, pitchers... Um... I don't know which pitcher is worse, honestly. Like, Skoglin, like, we know about Kashner. He's, he's a guy you can stack against pretty much every time he goes out. And then Skoglin, on the other hand, he just gets pounded by righties. He's seventh in average exit velocity against them this year. Um, O's are getting healthier. They've got Scope back. Um, they got Trumbo back. So their lineup's looking a lot better against righties. Valencia hit a home run yesterday. Um so I like a bunch of these O's righties to start out with. Do you like the Royals side as well? Yeah, I like them both. Both teams made the uh, Spotlight Stacks article this morning. Um, it's just a play against both of their pitching staffs. Uh, Orioles are probably my... I, I probably like the Orioles a little bit more than I like the Royals. Um, Mancini, Jones, Machado, Scope, Trumbo like at the top. Then Danny Valencia. Just a lot of righty bats that can do some damage to Scogland. And then uh, from the Royals side, uh, Moustakas made the spotlight hitter, so I love getting some Moose Tacos in there. Uh, you know, has always hit righties better in his life. I looked it up, put this in the, uh, I think the Stacks article. Kashner has the second highest ex-fip versus righties over the past three years of anybody that's thrown like similar amounts of innings or more. So uh, really, really bad as a pitcher uh Moustakis Duda I'm not like a big John Jay guy but you know he's fine to have at a bargain price as part of a stack uh, I like both sides of this game a lot from a hitting perspective uh if this doesn't have a lot of runs I could pretty much just uh close the the fan duel tab in my browser because I'm not gonna have a good night I'm gonna have a lot of these guys yeah so I like Moustakis and Duda the best uh, Salvador Perez uh, 3700 on DK at catcher. 
yeah. is a nice little value there, I think. And then um, I'm not crazy about Solaire against a righty, but he made me look stupid yesterday against Dylan Bundy, who was very good against righties coming into that start. Um, so I like 3-4-5, but I can get to Solaire, um, even Merrifield at the sixth spot. And then I like the top seven. Uh, I'm not crazy about Chris Davis for the Orioles, but I, I like the top seven if you if you take him out a little bit. Okay, you have Merrifield in at the sixth spot. I've got him leading off, so let me see if I need okay. to make some tweaks. Ah, no, that has changed since I did my last stuff. So is he in leadoff? No, I've got it. He, he's he's six on what I'm looking at I'm, now. But okay, God, I'm why would you want John Jay to lead off against the lefty? Whatever. I don't know. Well, don't they know. do have a nice balance in that projected lineup now. Lefty, righty, lefty, righty, lefty, righty. So that's good. Uh, makes me like Merrifield a little bit less. Oh, wait, I'm flipping that in my head. Yeah, you would want John Jay to lead off more. Uh, I was flipping Scogland and Kashner. Oh, I, I see what you're saying. Uh, so, yeah, yeah that, that makes a little bit more sense, although I still like Merrifield. Um, this won't really change much of anything. Just makes John Jay look like a little bit better of a play because he'll get more more run. Yeah. So I can flip those guys right now while we're here and just to see what it looks like. Not that it's going to change anything. Six for Merrifield. One for uh. John Jay. Yeah, John Jay looks pretty tasty. Uh, Merrifield is a tough sell for me in the sixth spot on FanDuel, 3,700. A little bit more playable on uh, on DK. But those those first three lefty bats that you can get, Jay, Moustakis, and Duda, you know, Jay just from an extra plate appearances perspective, uh, Moustakis and Duda from uh, we can probably hit home runs against crappy Andrew Kashner guy. I still yeah. can't type Andrew Kashner's name without typing Andrew Cashew, so... It's just, it's one of the weirdest things that I do, and I can't figure out why I do it. Uh, I guess it's probably because I only eat cashews. I'm not a big other nut guy. So, Anyway, oh. now that we have a story about how much I like to eat, uh, uh, I can't say that out loud, or people are going to clip that out of there and use it out of context. <laughs> um, anything else here in this game that you want to touch on? Love just Machado that. tonight. I, I didn't say that specifically, but he's a spotlight hitter. Um I think he's probably the best play on the entire slate today. Yeah, just that the Orioles look super underpriced. Like they're yeah. a way that you can get Patrick Corbin in, even on DK. Outside of Machado, they're all thirty eight hundred dollars or less. At least all the ones that I want to use. Yeah. So this is probably going to be a pretty popular stack. I don't know that people are still on the play Scoglin bandwagon. I'm certainly not, um, and I want to stack against him. And this is a way you can fit in uh, a stud. On DK. Um, yeah, speaking of their prices, you mentioned under that threshold for DK. Everyone but Machado is under 3000 on FanDuel, which is just the bargain of all bargains. Uh, an Oriole stack, basically in any way, will allow you to do anything you want with the rest of your hitters and your pitcher. They're just yeah. too cheap. Especially when you can get guys like Scope for 2700 at second base or Danny Valencia at 2300 for third. You're checking off major, major boxes there. And obviously, uh, you should have Machado, you know, 4,500 for a shortstop in a righty-lefty matchup, especially when that shortstop is Manny Machado. Yeah. Absolute no-brainer. Yep. All righty. Yankees and Red Sox. That's not how you spell Yankees. That is, though. 5.1 run implied total for the Yanks, 3.9 for the Red Sox. It's a 62% chance to win for New York. Uh, Masahiro Tanaka going for the Yankees. Rick Porcello going for the Red Sox. Uh, there's no way I'm touching Porcello here. I will absolutely have zero of him unless something crazy happens and the Yankees have to sit like Judge Gregorius Stanton and Sanchez or something. Uh, just too big of an underdog. Second highest price on FanDuel. Third highest price on DK. He's a no-go for me. Uh, Tanaka is a guy that I'll have exposure to in a pretty decent amount. I think he looks good on both sides. Yeah, Purcello, I, I rarely play him, but if you just like look at his game logs, he's been good almost every start, or at least viable. Now, 10-8 for him on DK tonight in Yankee Stadium is a little bit of a different story, but he did pitch well against them 
in Boston, seven innings, six Ks. Um, so I'm I don't know what that really tells you, but ten eight's a tough price for him against this Yankee lineup, which is really deep. You got to deal with all these righties. Porcello has been really good against righties, but you're still gonna have to deal with Gardner and Gregorius and Aaron Hicks, Neil Walker. All these guys can hit. So I think it's just a little bit too dangerous of a matchup for Porcello. I don't really want a full stack against him though. Um, so I, I mean, I like Gregorius and Gardner, but I don't think I'm going to any of these big bats. I thought it was going to be David Price on the night shift last night, and I missed that he was scratched. So this game sort of became a lot less interesting now with Porcello going. Yeah, I don't have a ton of interest in bats. Um, I'd be okay with Stanton as a one-off, particularly on DK. I think he's a little underpriced. Uh, Gregorius and Gardner, I think, go well together. If you wanted to do, like, Sanchez, Stanton, Gregorius, Gardner, I wouldn't have a huge problem with that on DK. Get a catcher, get a shortstop, a big-time power bat, leadoff lefty versus righty. You know, all those pieces fit together pretty well, but I don't see a lot of wiggle room on that stack. And then on FanDuel, uh, I think everybody's just too expensive. They're not a direction that I'm going. I obviously don't want any Red Sox bats. 3.9 run implied total. Uh, not that amazing. For me, this game is basically just all about Tanaka. Yeah, I like Tanaka. Um, I should say I like his price. The matchup is about as bad as it gets. The Red Sox have the second lowest K percentage, highest on base percentage, highest ISO, highest WRC plus uh, against righties this year. He struggled in his first start against Boston. I he, He's got the talent to overcome pretty much any matchup, and he's got the pitch arsenal to do that as well. Yeah. So if he's on his game, he could mow down these Red Sox. Wouldn't shock me. If he's off at all, they're going to make him pay. So it is a this is like the definition of a GPP play, a guy like Tanaka who will give up some hard contact. Um, I would really want some shares if I'm making a bunch of lineups, but I would also want some Red Sox stacks because – this could go south for Tanaka like it did in his first start. No, absolutely. Um, th there should always be some fear of the Red Sox lineup, regardless of the, the implied total. Um, there's just, when you have that much talent, especially in like the top five or six, things could go haywire really quickly. It, all it takes is one pitch over the plate and, you know, J.D. Martinez puts one into the seats with Betts and Benintendi on and, you know, your Tanaka ship is kind of sunk. But yeah. I'm going to have a bunch of them. I'd say that he'll probably be, like, my third most owned pitcher, if I had to guess. Still a long way to go before 7 o'clock, but that's the direction I'm going in. Uh, yeah. I'll have some Gardner as a one-off, but that's probably the extent of it all. Yeah, I, I agree. Not crazy about anything here. I think more of a Red Sox mini stack against Tanaka would be how I'd go just because that Yankees bullpen just comes in and strikes out everybody, it seems like. So I don't really want to do a five-man stack against Tanaka in a good bullpen, but uh, like Betts and JD and, you know, Bogarts or someone like that, I think you could get to a mini stack against Tanaka. Yeah, they, and they won't have ownership tonight. They'll, they, I mean, it'll be relatively low on the Red Sox side. Yeah. Um, so it wouldn't take much to get to something like that. <sighs> I think we're good there. Phillies and Giants. Uh, Phillies, 4.5 run implied total. Giants, 4.2. 54% chance to win for the Phillies. Uh, Nick Pavetta going for Philadelphia. Chris Stratton going for San Francisco. Uh, I don't have an eye really on Stratton, and I would say that Pavetta is probably the best value play, play of the day from a pitching perspective. Uh, yeah. Where, where do you land in there? Yeah, I don't have any interest in Stratton. He's a guy that I think is pretty overrated, or at least he was a few starts ago. People were looking to play him. I'm not looking to play him here against uh, the Phillies, who they have bad numbers against righties, or at least high strikeout numbers, but... They do have some really good bats in here, and Stratton's not the king of missing bats. So I, I don't like Stratton here. He'll probably get some ownership just because it's a righty against the Phillies, but I'm not going there. Um, 
Pavetta, on the other hand, I'm assuming he's going to be pretty chalky. He's 6,900 on DK. Um, he's been really, really good against righties. Uh, not only a high K percentage, um, high ground ball percentage, almost 50%, and then 15.2% hard contact against righties this year, which is insanely good. Um, and then the best bats for the Giants are on the right side. McCutcheon, Posey, Longoria. Um, I'm not that worried about Gregor Blanco. I mean, Brandon Bell is a little bit worrisome. But there's really one bat that I'm actually worried about for Pavetta, despite this total. Um, so I like Pavetta a ton. I don't see how I get away from him at this price. No, I'm, I couldn't be more with you there. Uh, he's an incredible value on both sides. I won't have a like a huge amount of him on FanDuel just because there's not a big need to pay like to have to pay down for pitching. But I'll have a good amount just to be able to get whatever I want from hitting. Um, but like, you know, I'll, we'll talk about Geo in a bit and Alex Wood in a bit. But between Geo, Tanaka, Wood, like they have enough value or they have enough uh, upside and like cheap enough price that getting down to Pavetta isn't necessarily something that I need to prioritize. Mm. But on DK, needing two pitchers. Absolute no-brainer for me. Yeah. Um, from a bats perspective, I like the Philly side of it a little bit. Um, you know, I I prefer Hoskins to have a matchup against a lefty, but uh, I I like the prices of some of these guys. I like the price of Althair. Uh, make sure he's still in the lineup. I assume he is. Yeah. He should be. Yeah. Uh, I love Stanton's price, or yes, yeah, Stanton Santana's price, uh, twenty nine hundred on Fanduel. Uh, it's a really, really nice spot for him, just from a price point. Uh, I'll have a few Philly stacks, a little bit of exposure, and then uh, you mentioned Brandon Belt. Uh, he's a guy that looks pretty good for me on DK. I don't love the price as much on Fanduel, where he's only a hundred dollars cheaper. Um, this is more just Pavetta for me, and then just like a scattering of Philly stacks, and maybe like one or two lines of Giants. They won't be very popular for me. I like the Philly stack. Um, Stratton is top 20 in all the MLB in average exit velocity, just hmm. against both hands. And if you look at his hard contact numbers on Fangrass, he's almost 50% against righties. Um He's, I don't think he's very good at all. 40% to lefties. Like Hoskins, uh, I like Herrera. Alfair for 3600 never gets priced up. Uh, I love Carlos Santana for 3800 And then Cesar Hernandez leading off for 4 k I like top five uh, Phillies here a lot. Okay. Uh, I mean, I get that. Uh they will just be – there's just too many other stacks that I'll be on before I get to the Phillies with any sort of volume. Yeah. Like the next game, for instance. Blue Jays and Mariners. Blue Jays, 4.8 run implied total. Mariners, 4.5. 54% chance to win for the Jays. Uh, Jaime Garcia going for Toronto. Wade LeBlanc going for Seattle. Uh, not really looking at the pitching in this game. I, I don't need to really go down that low. Uh, this is more of a hitting play, and uh, you better believe I'm going to be going after the team that got no hit last night. <laughs> I like the Jays quite a bit. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Um, I like Teoscar a ton. Josh Donaldson being back is a huge boost. Yeah. Justin Smoke hasn't been as good against lefties as he was last year when he was just mashing them. Um, but I like him, Solarte. I'm not crazy about Pilar, but Russell Martin for 3,100. Got to be one of the top catcher plays on the slate. Um, and then I'd probably cut it off at Morales at the seven hole at 3,300. So I like all these Blue Jays. Not crazy about Wade LeBlanc in general. Um, I don't think he's going to pitch very long, maybe like 80 pitches. So if you, I don't think you should get cute and try to use him. Um, he pitched 70 in his last game, four innings. I think we could probably expect 70 to 80 here, um, but not much more than that. Yeah. Yeah, it's all it's all hitting for me. I mean, mm. 
you know, it's not like LeBlanc is going to roll out there and no hit them again. Uh, Pack's in a very different guy than Wade LeBlanc. So Donaldson's one of my favorite guys on the day. Um, 4,000 on FanDuel, 4,800 on DK. Gets the the righty lefty matchup. You know, I just I can't have enough there. Blue Jays implied total, third highest of the day. Uh, you know, Russell Martin, a guy that looks really nice on DraftKings if you need to play a catcher. Um, I wish that all of their switch hitters hit better against lefties, but I'll take what I can get. It's still going, you know, it's still going to be an entire lineup of righties for Wade LeBlanc, which is yeah. uh, tough sledding sometimes. Yeah, unless you're James Paxton and you just go set him up and set him down. Right. Uh, they have a little bit different stuff. <laughs> yeah. I mean, LeBlanc, he can strike out some guys, but he's going to give up some hard hits to these righties. Uh, oh. So, I, yeah, I love the Blue Jays. And then just looking at Jaime Garcia's season so far, as far as game logs go, he's allowed at least three earned runs in every start since his first one. He had a good first outing, and then he's just been pretty bad since then. And he's top 16, or sorry, top 15 in average exit velocity against righties this year. It's just not a good spot for Jaime against a team that doesn't really swing and miss. So Nelson Cruz and Mitch Hanniger, two of my favorite bats on the entire slate. Yeah. Uh, Chris's boy, Ryan Healy, <laughs> makes a decent play. Uh, I'd like to see him bat six, though. Segura for 4K. I like the Mariners stack, I think, as much or more than the Blue Jays here. Okay. Uh, I love Cruz. Uh, there's a decent chance he's my home run or my Diddy Dong pick uh, tonight. Just he sh- This is why you, you try to roster him, a lefty matchup. Yeah, he should be chalk. I, I would think 4,200 against a lefty. Yeah. Um, I think Hanniger should be chalk too, but he'll be like, what, half the ownership of Cruz? Um, yeah, that sounds just, about right. Yeah, so I love Hanniger even more then. Yeah, uh, you can get to a Mariner stack really easily. Segura, Cruz, Hanniger. Ne- I, don't, I don't ever have a problem grabbing Cano, even if it is mm-hmm. lefty-lefty as part of a stack. Um, yeah, agreed. It's just a good game for hitting, not a great game for pitching. Yep, all the hitting in this game. Yeah, for sure. And Blue Jays, get some hitting today as opposed to the no hitting you got yesterday. They will get a hit today. Uh, they'll, they'll get a hit. Uh, let's hope so, because I'll have a lot of Josh Donaldson. And every pitcher will get an out today, too. <laughs> there you go. It's my hot take for the day. Get, uh, that, that is get back on track. Yesterday had a team that didn't get any hits and a pitcher that didn't get any outs. That's, you yep. probably don't have that very often. No, that's, that's tough to do. <laughs> Rays and Braves. Rays, 3.9 run implied total. Braves, 4.1. It's a 51% chance to win for the Braves. Ryan Yarbrough going for the Rays. Julio Terahan going for Atlanta. I don't want any pitching here, uh, particularly on DraftKings. My boy Julio is uh, the fourth most expensive pitcher on the slate, which is ridiculous. The fact that he is more expensive than Masahiro Tanaka or Alex Wood is ludicrous, in my opinion. Um, I, I think, so just to start off, I think Teron is overpriced for sure. He's he's not a 9K pitcher. It's the Rays, but it's not that great of a matchup, just how they've been against righties. Teron is, he's always been really good against righties, or at least much, much better than he has against lefties. Same this year. He's got a 26.7% K percentage, uh, limiting hard contact very well. And then his swinging strike, um, every game besides, well, he had that one where he got rocked by the Phillies, and then he had one against the Nationals, so we can give him a pass for the Nationals one. But outside of that, he's been over 11.1% swinging strikes in every start. So I'm encouraged by what I'm seeing from Tehran. I think he's top 30. He's top 25 in whiffs per swing this year. It's not a perfect spot for him, but if you just go down this lineup, the righties, he's been great against. So Kron, Duffy, Ramos, Carlos Gomez, Echeverria, and then the lefties he's going to have to deal with are Brad Miller. Okay, that's 
a decent bat, and then Denard Span, Wendell, and Malik Smith. So I don't see him getting blown up by any of these lefties, and he's been awesome against righties. So I do have a bunch of interest in Tehran, wow. even at his price. Yeah, wow. he's been he's been much much better. So uh, I'm jumping on here. I mentioned earlier that uh, Andrew Kashner has the second highest xFIP over the past three years uh, against lefties. Who do you think has the highest? Uh, I'm sure it's Tehran. He's yeah, it been awful is. against lefties. Yeah, so yeah. he's got the ability to make Spawn and Joey Wendell and Malik Smith look like. I don't know. Insert good left-handed hitter here. Um, I can't. I can't do it. I won't have any of him. Or at least I hope I don't. I'll be cheering for him. Uh, if I were on DK, I wouldn't touch him at all. Uh, I just. I really hate that price on DraftKings. It's a little bit more feasible on FanDuel. He's the let's see eighth most expensive pitcher, which I think is a bit more reasonable. Um, you know, it's a 50-50 game. The only thing that's appealing to me is really the low implied total. As far as I'm concerned, this game is just, like, not on the slate. I'll watch it as a fan, uh, but my ownership for either one of these teams, whether it's pitching or hitting, is going to be minuscule at best. Oh, you don't like the Braves either? Not really. Um, you know, like, I don't have a problem having Albies or Acuna, but, like... You know, they're expensive. You're, you're getting what you pay for. And Braves only have a 4.1 run implied total. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 higher than that on a, on the slate. So, like, nothing's really standing out as a great matchup here. I mean, Albies is 5,200 on DK. Acuna's 4,700. It's not like you're getting some sort of bargain. Um, and then I don't really need... Freeman or Mar like, like you know Freeman's fine in a lefty lefty matchup. That's not why I'm ignoring him. He's just expensive. Uh, I don't need Markakis. Um, you know, I love Joey Bats being on the Braves, but there's a reason he got signed to a minor league deal and wasn't on a team. Um, he should thrive in like a righty lefty matchup, but he's also old as shit. So <laughs> I don't. I just I don't know. I'm not wild about it. Acuna and Albies are fine hitting 1-2, but there's not enough implied total for the Braves right now to, to make me want to have any part of it. So I like I like a bunch of these Braves, actually. It's going to be sort of a bullpen game for the Rays. Yarbrough is going to start off, probably go three or four innings if he's uh, pitching well. And then like the, the bullpen as a whole has a 4.29 xFIP when I checked last night. Uh, so that's probably updated. It's probably a little bit different now. Uh, I don't really care that it's a bad park for the Braves. They have a ton of power and speed, and they're going up against a average to below average bullpen for the Rays. Uh, pricing is going to keep a lot of people off of them on DK, I think. Um, but if you don't fit in Corbin, you can fit in Braves pretty easily. And I think they give Tehran some run support. So... I like Suzuki a ton for 3,500, just mashing lefties. That's and fair. then, yeah, I like Acuna. Is it Acuna or Acuna? Yeah. What does he have, asking me? Does he have the Enya? Or is it? I can never remember. Anyways, Freddie Freeman hits lefties really well. All I do um, is whiff on people's pronunciation, so it's Acuna. Acuna. Okay, so I thought so. Um, I, <clears throat> I even like Camargo. For 3,100. So, I like all these Braves. Um, I don't know. It's just a bad park. That's the only thing that's not making me just lock them in. Yeah. Uh, park factor for home runs as a right-handed hitter last year was the sixth worst uh, in baseball. So, kind of scary for someone like Acuna. See, got it right there. Uh, I do like the Kurtz's you can call. If you need a catcher, 3,500. Um, I think is a nice price in a righty-lefty matchup, but oh boy, I'm gonna have trouble getting to some Braves. Look, I want you to be right more than I've ever wanted you to be right before. Suzuki is yet to strike out against the lefty this year too. He just never strikes out and hits everything hard. Yeah, I mean, 
Inciarte doesn't strike out a ton. Suzuki obviously doesn't. Marquecas doesn't. So there should be some balls in play. Um, yeah. Gotta hope they find some holes. Yep. <clears throat> Story of our lives. Uh, I don't. Th <laughs> I don't think I have anything else to touch on here. I mean, do you like any raise bats against Not Tehran? Really. Uh, Brad yeah. Miller, I guess is like yeah. a, a decent discounted uh, first base option. Um, that's <clears throat> probably it. Yeah, I don't I don't like any of them. I was just seeing if you did. I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't love one offing Brad Miller, but <laughs> like if if there's a guy on the Rays that I had to pick, I would pick Brad Miller. Yep, I'm with you there. Okay. Padres and Nats uh, Padres 3.6 run implied total. Nats 3.9, 54% chance to win for the Nats. Joey Lucchesi going for San Diego. Gio Gonzalez going for the Nats. Um, Gio is my favorite pitcher of the slate. He's the guy that I'll have the most of on FanDuel. Price is just an absolute bargain at 9,000. Uh, I don't necessarily feel like he's the same sort of bargain on DK. But he's probably the guy that I would want the most um, on DraftKings. I'm just—I'd be a little bit more interested in in Corbin on DK, uh, just because of like the price differences. Um, but Geo's my dude on Fanduel. He'll—he'll be—he'll have my most ownership for sure. Yeah, I—I I get the Geo play. I just have a really tough time paying 11-4 for him. Doesn't have huge strikeout stuff. Um, not saying he can't strike out some Padres because he certainly could. It's a good park, so I get it. But if I'm paying up on for pitchers tonight, it's going to be all the way up for Corbin, who's just been insanely good all year. Um, Geo's fine. Like I don't really want to target against him, besides maybe Perella or Villanueva. But uh, I just it's so hard for me to get to that price for him. He's always it seems like Geo's always on these short slates. And he's just like one of the only decent pitchers on the slate, and DK just prices him at 10k or 11k every single time, and then he sucks. <laughs> I just I, it seems like he happens every time. He's on these Wednesday Thursday slates, and he just is chalk at 11,000. Yeah, um, he's gonna be, I would imagine, pretty highly owned. Yeah, so to, to go up against the Padres. In Petco, um, it's still Petco, right? I, I think so. I, I feel for some reason when I say that, I feel like they changed it, but I'm, I'm almost positive they didn't. I, That's still. Petco. I missed that if they did. No, it's still Petco. I don't know okay. what I'm thinking of. <laughs> well, they change, it, it, Stadium names change so much nowadays. Yeah. Can't all play in like the Smoothie King Center or something like that for the Pelicans. Like it's, you never know when one of these companies are going to go under. I'm more of a PetSmart guy than a Petco, so uh, I guess that's why I like the Nats a little bit more. Petco is not my uh, my official pet store that I use. <laughs> Padres have the sixth highest ISO and sixth highest hard hit percentage against lefties this year, so. They're wow. they're not some pushover matchup that they might have been in past years, especially against lefties. Uh, they've got good right-handed bats, Perella and Margot, and Villanueva can hit for a lot of power even in Petco. So I don't know, man. I I can't get to Geo here, especially if he's going to have a lot of ownership. Yeah, I don't have a problem being off of him on DK, uh, but I have him as with the highest individual projection on Fanduel right now. Higher than Corbin, regardless of price. So, wow. yeah, uh, I'm a big, big Geo believer <clears throat> in this one. Okay. Um, from a bat's perspective, uh, like, I don't know, Zimmerman, Rendon, Turner all look pretty nice. Being able to get a first baseman, third baseman, shortstop all works for me. Uh, if you want to cap that off with Bryce Harper, I, I don't love it. Um, I don't love a Nat stack in general. Sub four implied total is tough for me to get behind, but there's enough righty bats in the Nats lineup that you can make a, a nice stack. And I wouldn't expect a ton of ownership for Harper uh, in this particular matchup. So 
you know, there are worse things than having Harper in your lineup. I, I mean, I like some of these Nats bats. Lucchesi, I'll probably use him at points this year. I do think he's a pretty good pitcher. Agreed. Only has two pitches, though. Like, he only has fastball changeup, if I remember correctly, looking at his arsenal. Um, he's got 40% hard contact against righties, and these are some really good Nats hitters. Um, Rendon, Trey Turner, whatever you think of him as a hitter. Um, but Rendon, Zimmerman, Kendrick all hit lefties very well. When Michael Taylor makes contact, he hits lefties very hard. Um, it's just make contact is the problem with him. He's got like a 40% strikeout rate against lefties this year. Um, so I like really three, four, five, and then Taylor if you want to um, if you want to do a four man stack or something on on Fanduel. But it's not the best park, and I do have respect for Lucchesi, so I'm probably gonna cherry pick Rendon and then Zimmerman or Kendrick. Yeah, I'm with you there. Uh, it's hard to want to get too many hitters in it. <clears throat> in this park, in this matchup, with these implied totals. Um, mm -hmm. It's just, it's not there from an offense perspective. Yeah. Uh, sorry, I needed more coffee. Final game. Dodgers and D-backs. Uh, Dodgers, 53% chance to win. 3.5 run implied total. 3.3 uh, for the Diamondbacks. Very, very low. Uh, Alex Wood going for Los Angeles. Pat Corbin going for Arizona. Um, I like both of these guys. I think that Wood is like a better, obviously a better value, uh, particularly on DraftKings where he's, you know, half of Corbin basically. <laughs> um, and I don't see the gap being anywhere near what their salary gap is. I prefer Wood in this game on DraftKings. I do like Corbin a little bit on FanDuel. Although, uh, the lack of a win is kind of unappealing for me um, because of that line. Corbin's good. He's been way better than my numbers have suggested throughout this year. Uh, and at a 10000 price point on FanDuel, he's a bit of a bargain. I'll have a decent amount of him on FanDuel for the first time probably this year. On DK, I'd have a lot of trouble getting there. I just think there are better options. Yeah, I, on DK, if you don't want to pay up 13-3, I get it. Uh, I think he's got the best chance to be the highest Ross-going pitcher by a long shot, really. I don't see anyone matching the kind of upside he has. So I'll sacrifice a hitter or two and get up to him from a guy like Gio, who I just don't think has a lot of upside at 11-4. Um Corbin's really the only guy I see on this slate that could go for 30-plus DK points. So that's attractive to me. Um, you know, I'll just I'll make up the extra salary elsewhere. I think there are enough cheap bats where I could get to him. And Corbin's just been insane. He's still number one in whiffs per swing. Uh, huge swinging strike percentage. Like, And then who are you scared of in this Dodgers lineup outside of Barnes? You have Puig coming back tonight? I apparently have multiple different dudes than you were just talking about. So, yeah, let's update this. So, I'm seeing Taylor, Hernandez, Kemp, which, okay, that's a good three to start out with if you're the Dodgers. And then Bellinger versus a lefty. Barnes can hit lefties. And then after that, Puig, Farmer, LaCastro. I mean, and then Alex Wood, pitcher spot. I don't know. I'm not super scared of this matchup for Corbin. No, at I, all. I wouldn't be. Yeah. God, I'm cha I'm gonna have to change. <laughs> the only guys that I had that are in the projected lineup now that weren't in there the night before, three of the eight. <laughs> so it's basically well, a, the entire like I entered in what a, what amounts to the rest of the hitters on the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so let's get Kike in there at two. Uh, let's get Austin Barnes. I'm glad that this is as fast for me as it is. This could be a major problem if I really had to, like, go do a bunch of more work. All right. Let's take a look at that now. Yeah, no. Uh, I mean, Kemp, I guess, in the three-hole is scary-ish. Uh, Puig is always scary to pitch against, but 
Uh, I'm sure Corbin's not too worried about it. Yeah, I wouldn't really be all that worried about a Dodgers lineup. Um, like I said, I'll have some Corbin on FanDuel. Uh, I just don't like that price on DK. I'm anxious to see what his ownership is on DraftKings as I try to like absorb more DK information. Um, like, Cor- yeah, Corbin will be owned just because you've got Pavetta, who can do like 15 points, and yeah. a lot of people know that he like that seems like a pretty pretty reasonable number for him here. Um, and people will just take that with the 13 or what they think is going to be the highest raw scoring pitcher. Um, so Corbin will be. I don't know, 25, 30%, I would think, on DK even. Um, unless I'm completely off the mark on something. But I, I don't see him being low-owned at all on DK despite his huge price tag. Yeah, that sounds like a, a pretty reasonable spot for his ownership. Um, I think he'll, he'll be pretty highly owned on FanDuel as well. As for bats in this game... Um, well, I guess I need to talk a little bit about Alex Wood. Uh, I like Alex Wood a lot here. 8,400 on FanDuel, only 7,600 on DK. Uh, I like him in both spots. It's not as if I'm, like, you know, the Diamondbacks do have some righties that I'm scared of, Goldschmidt, Pollock in particular. But I'm an Alex Wood believer. Like, when he's healthy, he looks good, uh, has the opportunity to miss bats. Um, he's a guy that I'd be fine paying down for, particularly on, on DraftKings. Like, I would like a Tanaka Wood combo on DK. Uh, I just don't know. Like, you can basically have whatever you want from a hitting perspective if you do that. It might even be too big of a discount. Right. Yeah. Alex Wood's price is putting me on him. I don't know why he's priced so low. Um, it's, he's never down in this range, or at least I don't really remember him being this cheap. He's che- he's eight hundred dollars uh. cheaper on DraftKings. That never happens. Yeah, so like I'm looking at his prices to start the season, he was 10 4, 9 6, 11 4, 8 2, 9 8, 8 2. So this is the lowest price we've seen for Wood on DK. Yeah. Um, the park is really good for pitchers. Um, outside of Goldschmidt and Pollock, Owings hitting a little bit better. I'm not worried about Alex Wood's matchup. The thing I am worried about him and really all Dodgers pitchers is that they just never get to 100 pitches. Uh, like he his, his highest is 96 this year. He's hit that twice, but that's like his max, which is frustrating. At this price, you can sort of make an exception for it, but he he's never really going to go past like six innings unless he's super super efficient. Um, he can get some strikeouts here for sure. I mean, you got to consider him for the price, if, especially if you want to pair him with a guy like Tanaka or Pavetta. You can get in pretty much any bat you want. Yeah, uh, I I love him. I, I can't have enough of Wood at that price point. Like, I mean, I can have enough, obviously, but he'll have a decent amount of ownership uh, just because of where he lands uh, price-wise. Mm-hmm. And I just don't, you know, the D-backs have a 3.3 run implied total. That is crazy low. This whole game, both teams have the lowest implied totals of the slate. D-backs are the lowest, Dodgers are second lowest for right now, so... I mean, you can play both on DK if you can fit that in and yeah. just hope it's a, a 2-1 game or something like that. I could see that happening very easily. Yeah, I don't I don't have a huge issue with that. I would imagine that combo won't happen a ton. People will just shy away from that because of the, like, the logistics of it. Mm-hmm. But it should be a relatively unique pitching combo. Yeah. That's all I've got here, unless you wanted to touch on bats. I mean, I like Goldschmidt. Uh at his price point, 3400 still on FanDuel is insane. So I don't care much about anything about Alex Wood's talent when it comes to Goldschmidt getting a lefty. Yeah, Goldschmidt, um, I didn't realize how big of a slump he's in. Yeah. When I liked him yesterday, I thought he was going to be kind of chalky. I think he hit a double late in the game when I went to sleep after Godley sucked. But uh, he... He was in a huge slump, like looking at his game log, 0 for 4, 0 for 3, 0 for 3, 0 for 4, 0 for 3, 0 for 4, and then 1 for 4, 1 for 4. Um, so he, I didn't realize that. Um, I don't really take that into account that much. He's still going to mash lefties this year. So I do like Goldschmidt, 440, 300. It was nice to see him get a hit last night. Um, 
and two then walks Pollock, too. So like you know he yeah. was he was on base three out of five times. And, yeah, and then his last at bat that I saw, he Rich it was like Rich Hill's last hitter I think in the fourth or fifth inning, and he he got a bad called third strike on a two two count. Um, so that's just how it's going for Goldschmidt. Or at least that's how it was going for him. Um, so I like Goldschmidt and Pollock, and then Chris Owings is super cheap. I rarely play him, but twenty eight hundred on DK. Uh, at second base or outfield. Um, well, you were just talking about this now, uh, about his game log, so I want to bring it up. He hasn't hit a home run since April 15th. He's got four, and he only has 11 RBI. Yeah. I mean, they. I had no clue he was in this big of a slump. I hadn't heard anybody talking about it, and then I was tuning into the game, and each time he got up, oh, this is where he gets a hit. This is where he gets a hit. And Fuck, is that possible? Yeah. Dude, the Diamondbacks are 24 and 11. They've got the best record in the NL. It's not like, for him to only have 11 RBI, he's in the lineup all the time. And it's not as if they're 8 and 28 or something and not scoring any runs. <laughs> that's, that's crazy. Yeah, it doesn't really make that much sense when. Your best hitter is not hitting, but he's hitting lefties fine. 92.5 mile an hour average exit velocity this year. Um, it's not great, but he's. it's not like he's been – it's not like I think he's hurt or something where he's got like a hand say, or wrist injury. I think he's hurt. No, I mean he's hitting – he's getting good power. Like I'm seeing like 107 mile an hour, 106, uh, 112. He's hitting the ball hard off of lefties so i'm not too worried about it i mean he still has with everything that we just said that lack of home run uh pop so far this year he's still got a 115 weighted runs created plus so significantly better than average still as a hitter because mm -hmm. it doesn't appear that his batting eye has gone anywhere still has the 356 on base percentage uh you know life hasn't been great from a pop perspective so far but I'm not going to jump off the Paul Goldschmidt bandwagon anytime soon, especially against a lefty. Yeah, he could hit. A, you know, he could double dong tonight. I wouldn't be shocked at all. He's. I don't think anything's wrong with him. So, if he's going to be low owned just because he's in a slump or whatever, then take advantage of that for forty three hundred. Or for thirty four hundred on Fanduel. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, alrighty, that is it. Um, I've got two crunches. We'll take a look at DK now. Um, as soon as this uh, game filter thing pops off my screen. There we go. So, quite a bit of Tanaka, Wood, Geo, and Corbin, and then Pavetta. Um, actually, a decent amount of Joey Lucchesi, which is surprising to me. It looks like a lot of spread. It seems like the perfect way to like combine a bunch of guys. So, who would be your first two guys that you would want me to take a look at to see what we get to? Corbin and Pavetta? Yeah, just try Corbin and Pavetta. I think that's going to be a pretty chalky pairing. All right. Get six of them out of the gate. Uh, Nats and Royals. Uh, Blue Jays, Royals. Uh, Phillies, Jays, Flu Phillies, Royals. So you can pretty much do whatever mm -hmm. you need there. Yeah, you can make a lot work, it looks like, just from looking at those. Um, so yeah, the, both those guys will have ownership and a lot of it together, I would think. Yeah, I would, I would <clears> completely <throat> agree. Uh, who are we talking about? Alex Wood and... You said you liked t the Wood-Tanaka combo? Yeah. So if I did Wood and Tanaka... Yeah, like I can get to a lot of my spotlights. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you can get to a lot of Orioles, which is nice. An Orioles Blue Jays stack here. You get Russell Martin. You get Machado, Jones, Scope. One, two, three, four for the Orioles. One, two, five, six for the Jays. Plus Tanaka and Wood. Uh, that would be a lineup that I would love to have in like a single entry GPP. Yeah, I, I mean, two good pitchers, and I mean, I don't like Tanaka's matchup, but he's certainly got the talent to overcome it. So I get it with Tanaka. Yeah. Uh, hockey? Anything going on tonight? There are no games. I thought the game was tonight. It is tomorrow. That's the game seven uh, between Winnipeg and Nashville. And you don't have to play the showdown slate to watch it. It's it's going to be a fun game. 
it's been a fun series. Uh, so I'm just super pumped to watch. I'll probably have a showdown article on it tomorrow just for fun. Um, but nothing tonight. All right. Uh, NBA, um, Rockets and Warriors closed out their series last night. So all we have left from an NBA perspective, uh, Sixers and Celtics, they play game six tonight at eight. Um, if Boston wins, we're not going to have basketball for a couple days. If Philly wins, which is what everybody should be cheering for so that we keep having basketball and because this series is entertaining as hell. Um, so cheer for the Sixers. Trust the process. Uh, I don't have much to say about that game other than I hope Philly wins, which is not something that I normally say in my life all that often, but the Sixers are a different breed of Philadelphia, although they're really starting to get that Philadelphia cockiness that uh, I've come to hate over uh, 33 years of my life. <laughs> so Yeah. I don't know what to think about it there. Just go Sixers. It's more fun. Um, yeah, go Sixers. If you watched the end of the Rockets game last night, you watched Chris Paul put on an absolute clinic in the fourth quarter. That was really entertaining to see. But from a basketball perspective, there's not too much to talk about. Hockey, we don't have anything to really talk about. So... It's time to just focus on baseball, people. We're going to be uh, thinning out the herd of anything else. So baseball is the the number one priority moving forward. Um, like and subscribe this to this video and this channel. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, myself, at Josh Engelman, at Jay Kari, uh, or at Osimo underscore com. Um, we're always uh, putting out information on, um, on our Twitter account, links to our articles, any sort of very specific things like uh, yesterday we had a, a little bonus for the playline contest where uh, the highest finishing person that's a member at awesomeo.com uh, would get a, a a private tutorial with uh, with awesomeo himself um, which I've in the times that I've like you know tried to bounce some strategy ideas and thought processes off of Alex uh, I've come away like blown away with just the, the simpleness to his logic, but the complexity of what it means. And it's, it's perspective that I basically have never seen given out in any public forum whatsoever. Um, he's put out two articles over the past two days that are uh, very specific with re regards to strategy. Yesterday's was uh, with regards to... Um, pitchers and their chances of being either the top scoring pitcher on FanDuel or in the top two. Uh, that is stuff that is just not coming out on any other site. So that's the sort of stuff that you can get as a, a premium subscriber here. Very unique perspectives from the guy that's ranked number one in the world. Um, you're not going to get those perspectives elsewhere. So I highly, highly, highly recommend our, our premium package. And that's not just because I work here. Although... Uh, obviously, that bias does exist. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, you got anything else you want to add? No, just I just second that. Um, that's really valuable time you get with um, one of the sharpest guys that I've talked to. Uh, just a next level thinker, and um, so this slate. Good luck, guys. Yeah. Uh, it's not the best slate that we've got, but it's the only one we have. So um, there will be better slates, but hopefully we can make some money. Um, enjoy. I couldn't have said it better myself. Adios, people.